I started with nothing, absolutely nothing. In fact, I started below nothing. And I started growing this little plumbing company with six employees to now we have over 300 employees. And back in 2009, you guys tried to unionize me. My guys were making money. They were getting paid more than the union halls were paying their plumbers. Our benefits were better. But because we started bidding jobs that were union jobs and winning those, union pipe fitters decided they were going to come after us. They would show up at my house. They'd be leaning up against my trucks. I'm not afraid of a physical confrontation. In fact, sometimes I look forward to it. I'm, that's not my problem. But when you're doing that to my employees, and then when, they, when that didn't work, they started picketing our job site, saying, shame on Mullen. Shame on Mullen. For what? For what? Because we were paying higher wages? Because we had better benefits and we wasn't requiring them to pay your guys' absorbent salaries? You talk about CEOs that are making all this money? And what do you make, Mr. O'Brien? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, I know what you make because in 2019, your salary was, um, what is this, 193000 I'm sure you got some pay raises since then. Yeah, when I was a And the average UPS driver, the feeder driver, makes... 35000 a year? That's and what do you bring That's to the inaccurate. Table? Hold on a second. That's inaccurate. State no, facts. I've got it right here. State facts. That's inaccurate. The average UPS feeder driver makes 35000 If you don't know your facts, then maybe you should oh, I, I know position. them because I negotiate the contract. So I say, I say one thing to you. What do you bring for that salary? What do I bring? Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what job have you committed or have you, have you uh, uh, started? What job have you created? One job other than sucking the paycheck out of some other body, somebody else that you want to say that you're trying to provide because you're forcing them to pay dues? And no, then, we don't force them. Senator, you've asked the you're question. You're out of line, Actually, I have it, and don't tell me I'm out of line. You are in line. Don't tell me I'm out of line. Well, you, you, you don't tell me. You I'm frame, making you frame, statement. You frame the statement like a tough guy. You need to shut your mouth yeah. because you don't know you're what you're talking about. You're going to tell me to shut my mouth? Yes, I did. Hold it. Hold it. Tough guy. I'm not afraid of physical. Senator, hold it. But don't sit there and tell me I'm out of line. Senator. You made a statement. You asked the question. I didn't ask the question. You did. You did. I answered question. the question. You asked the question about how well, much money. Let him answer. It was rhetorical. It was a rhetorical. Let, well, question. you may think it's rhetorical. It Sounded was rhetorical. to me like a question. Let him answer the question. I'm not yielding my time to him. So if you're going to let me keep my time, that's fine. You'll have your time. Let him. You ask your a question. question. He has so, a right to answer that. You just watched the first half of a very heated exchange that took place during a hearing convened by Senator Bernie Sanders for the Committee on Health, Education, Labor and Pensions. The title of that hearing was Defending the Right of Workers to Organize Unions Free from Illegal Corporate Union Busting, which is hilarious because I'm sure that the Republicans in attendance felt very uncomfortable by that, which I love. But as you saw, Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, who claims he's not anti-union, which is hilarious, attacked Teamsters union leader Sean O'Brien as some sort of a leech because it's the union leaders who are the leeches and not the greedy corporate CEOs. But as you saw, O'Brien was not putting up with his bullshit, and in the second second half, which we're about to watch, well, let's just say that Mark Wayne Mullen's cheeks got clapped by the, by the Teamsters leader when he was confronted about him being a greedy union-busting CEO himself. Let's watch. As far as my salary goes, my salary, if you follow me around, I walk, I actually look at this building. I bet you I work more hours than you do. Twice that's, as many hours. That's impossible. But no, that is, that's true. Sir, you don't secondly, know what hard work is. Secondly, you want to follow yeah, my schedule? Be, secondly, be, I'll do it in a follow. minute. Secondly, UPS feeder drivers, and you can quote uh, Carol Tomei, who quoted this, they make 93000 on the lower end. Some I of them make 150000 I said feeder drivers. Feeder drivers, tractor trailer drivers. Some of them make $150,000 per year. Some of them do. And I don't disagree with that. Most of them make over, most four, of them, after you've been there four years. Most of them make over 1000 uh, Okay. Most of them make over $100,000 So reclaiming my time, I go back to the whole fact that, sir, you haven't created a job. We haven't? You haven't been there. You haven't. Sure we have. You haven't. Sure we have. Tell me one job that you created. What are you, what are you talking about? Be specific. You're like, an employer? No, we're not an employer. people? No, but, you know, it's funny. So, no, we, then, we hold create, on. Then, that, we then create opportunity. Jobs. We create opportunity because we, Sir, hold, that's, that's we not, hold greedy CEOs like yourself accountable. You're calling me a greedy CEO. Oh, yeah, you are. 
You want to attack my salary, I'll attack you. Here, what did ahead. you make? What did you make when you owned your company? When I made my company, I kept my salary down at about uh, 50000 a year because I invested every penny into it. Okay. All right. You mean you hid money? No, I didn't hide. Oh, oh. hold on a second. Okay, cut. He said that's out of line. You said right, I was out of line. Even. We're He's, even. Made, we're not even. We're not even close to being even. You I think know. it's smart? You think you're funny? No, you're you, not. You think you're funny. No, I never said. I, did I smile? You frame, you frame your opening hold statement. Hold on, hold on. Let's, you frame your opening right. statement no, saying you're a tough Senator, guy. continue. This, uh, this Senator, is, please this continue is your statement. But, sir, this is a, I, think, I think it's great that you're doing this because Me too. this shows their behavior on how they try to come in and no, organize a shop. No, no, it's and just, they say about intimidation, and it's not about intimidation. This, it's they not show your behavior. Yeah, but stay on the issue, please. The issue is if you're really for the employee, then why are you against right to work? Why are you against private ballots? Okay. If you're really about the employee, let the employee make the choice. I'm not anti-union, but when you don't want to have a private ballot, that's not intimidating? That's not intimidating? Why wouldn't you want a private ballot? If that is intimidating the employee. If you don't want a right to work state, don't force somebody to, make, to pay dues to an organization they may not agree with. Just to be clear, that right there was total bullshit from Mark Wayne Mullen. If union members don't pay their dues, then unions can't exist. But that's what these union busting Republicans want. They want to defang unions so their corporate donors can continue to exploit employees. It's not right to work. It's right to work for less under shittier conditions. But my favorite part of that, of course, was when Sean O'Brien called him out for being a greedy CEO because that is absolutely factual. As the Washington Post reported back in 2014, Mark Wayne Mullen violated house ethics rules by breaking in more than $600,000 from his plumbing company, which far exceeds permissible levels of outside income for members of Congress. And for additional context, Kenny Stansel of Common Dreams explains, asked by O'Brien how much he made from his plumbing business, Mullen claimed, quote, I kept my salary down at about $50,000 a year because I invested every penny into it, which is bullshit. But in 2013, then Representative Mullen reportedly pocketed more than $600,000 from the companies in violation of House ethics rules and federal laws limiting how much outside income members of Congress are allowed to receive. Although Mullen transferred ownership of the companies to his family, he continued to serve as a board member and chief advertiser while raking in hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So do you understand now how slimy and weaselly Mark Wayne Mullen is? Oh, I only made $50,000 a year. That was my official salary. Yeah, but yet you pocketed hundreds of thousands of dollars by transferring ownership to your family. So you're full of shit, and Sean O'Brien saw right through you. Now, not to mention that, Sean O'Brien later tweeted out, For the record, Senator Mullen saw his reported assets balloon from a range of $7.3 million to $29.9 million at the end of 2020 to a range of $31.6 million to $75.6 million. But he's just a small business owner, folks, who doesn't want to see unions intimidate his workers or his small business. He cares about the working class, right? Yeah, not buying it. And in response to this video going viral, people on Twitter quickly pointed out what his response was to Biden's student debt forgiveness plan. He tweeted out, we do not need farmers and ranchers, small business owners and teachers in Oklahoma paying the debts of Ivy League lawyers and doctors across the US. So small business owners shouldn't bear the cost of these elite college graduates who, by the way, make less than $75,000 per year. That's completely unacceptable. They shouldn't be forced to bear that cost. But it's perfectly reasonable that multimillionaires like him get his PPP loan forgiven entirely. Because as you recall, the Biden administration responded to that tweet, pointing out Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen had over 1.4 million in PPP loans forgiven. Because it's fine if farmers and ranchers and small business owners and teachers in Oklahoma pay the debt of a powerful U.S. senator worth millions upon millions of dollars, but it's completely unacceptable to cancel a portion of debt for Americans making less than $75,000 per year. 
They're so disingenuous. But I want to leave you with some lasting words from Sean O'Brien, who responded on Twitter after this exchange went viral, saying, don't let them distract you. Unions create jobs, make work safer, and put more money in workers' pockets. Most importantly, everything we do is to improve the lives of our members. I wonder if some others can say the same about their constituents. Exactly. So, yeah, there's nothing else to say about this. We'll leave that there. Mark Wayne Mullen learned the hard way that if you're going to take a shot at unions, you better not miss. When you acting like a beta, 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 be